now we have Vincent Mascolo, who's CEO at Iron Ridge Resources, a West Africa-focused gold and lithium explorer. Good, uh, good afternoon, Zach. Thanks for having me uh, on, on today. Um, my name is Vincent Mascolo. I'm the CEO, Managing Director of Iron Ridge Resources. Iron Ridge is a diversified explorer and developer, soon to be producer. We create value through the discovery and development of early stage organic exploration opportunities. Today, we'll be focusing on two key aspects of the business. Firstly, our lithium project in Ghana, which recently attracted a full funding, a full funding to production investment of 102 US million dollars by America's Piedmont Lithium. And secondly, we will be talking about the demerger of our highly prospective and advancing suite of gold assets in Cote d'Ivoire and Chad. Here is our disclaimer. Please read it at your leisure. A corporate snapshot. Um, we're listed on London's uh, alternative investment market, AIM, with a ticker IRR. Um, and we have a tightly held share register with significant and supportive shareholders in Thor Limited, DGR Global, Sumitomo Corporation, along with board and management holding an impressive 6.5% of the business. Soon to join the register will be Piedmont Lithium with a $15 million US investment to acquire 9.5% of the business, and that will bolster Iron Ridge's treasury in the coming months to nearly 28 million US dollars. Uh, we are a diversified explorer. Uh, we are lithium and gold focused uh, Afri Africa exp African exploration specialists with a significant footprint in Ghana. Cote d'Ivoire and Chad. We've made three discoveries in three jurisdictions in four years, and we have a pipeline of assets to deliver many more significant discoveries in the years to come. Our compelling investment case, starting with uh, our most advanced project in Ghana, uh, which is now fully funded to production. Uh, in the last 15 months, we have delivered a maiden mineral resource estimate a robust scoping study, and now a fully funded to production package of 102 US million dollars by America's Piedmont Lithium. And we'll talk about that in more detail. As part of our second point uh, topic for, the, for, this, for this afternoon, it's our gold suite of gold assets in Cote d'Ivoire and Chad. Uh, these, will be form, these will form part of a gold demerger um, in the coming months to unlock shareholder value. And as part of that demerger, we will maintain momentum through exploration programs uh, and uh, no momentum will be lost through the demerger of the gold assets. So to the key highlight of the last few weeks is our Awoya lithium pegmatite discovery in Ghana, which is now, as I'll keep saying it through the presentation, is now fully funded to production. It's an industry standout asset. Um, and it has attracted the investment of Piedmont Lithium out of the US. So this is a very busy slide, so apologies for that, but I'll touch on the key highlight points. Uh, Piedmont Lithium, um, soon to be America's number one lithium hydroxide producer, have committed to fully fund our Woya Lithium project to, into production via a US $102 million accelerated staged earn-in program for 50% of the Cape Coast lithium portfolio and an offtake for 50% of life of mine spodumene concentrate production. The decision for us to partner with Piedmont was very compelling and easy. With a proven and visionary uh, leadership team, Piedmont is now set to become America's number one lithium hydroxide producer. Piedmont's all American status established relationships with Tesla and other auto industry leaders in America was also another significant factor for Iron Ridge. The benefits to Iron Ridge are as equally compelling. A resounding endorsement of the quality and calibre of our lithium project in Ghana, with similar geology to Piedmont's Carolina project, they see minimal geological risk. It expedites us from explorer producer uh, developer to near-term producer, which is very important. 
it also gives us a very strong cash position in the coming months of just I've just gone 28 million US dollars. Iron Ridge will require no further funding, no further dilution, and and gains a 50% free carry of the opportunity. Iron Ridge will also retain 100% of its Ivorian lithium assets for future initiatives. Our Oya project and the Cape Coast lithium portfolio in Ghana puts Iron Ridge in pole position to service the US and European markets without delay. Strong fundamentals have delivered nothing short of exceptional project economics. The fundamental drive, dynamic drivers of our project include exceptional geology, exceptional metallurgy, leveraging of first-class infrastructure, conventional mining, simple processing, producing a premium spodumene concentrate product, all from one kilometre from the National Highway, 110 kilometres from the deep sea port of Takarati, with adjacent multiple high voltage power lines uh, running adjacent to the site, including hydroelectric power. As you can see, our Cape Coast portfolio uh, runs along the, the Ghanaian coast and is situated halfway between the capital city Accra and the deep sea port of Takarati. We have a significant tenure package of 684 square kilometres. From this slide, you can see the course and broad broad nature of the lithium bearing pegmatites, which occur at surface across the foot, across the deposit footprint. We are currently drilling on site. Um, we have exceptional outcropping geology, and we're currently targeting a plus 20 million ton uh, uh, resource upgrade. We're, we're growing our resource rapidly, progressing and progressing with studies. We have five auger rigs, one RC rig, two diamond drill rigs currently on site with another two big rigs on the way. As you can see from the yellow dotted circles, these are a very exceptionally high grade uh, by industry standards, and these will form part of the updated resource estimate in the coming months. We are quietly confident of significant growth from our drilling campaign with further expansions and resource upgrades in subsequent uh, campaigns alongside and fully funded by Piedmont Lithium by the year's end, we, we believe. A key element of the success of this project is simple metallurgy. Exceptional metallurgy producing a coarse crush premium spodumene concentrate of greater than 6%. We have low contaminants, simple processing flow sheet. We have also laboratory tested to produce a 99.92% lithium carbonate all implying a first quartile costings with a low carbon footprint. Another key element to a successful project is exceptional logistics, and we're privileged to be leveraging of first-class logistics in Ghana, close proximity to road, port, and power. It's a project developer's dream. One can, I'll say it again, one kilometre from the National Highway, 110 kilometres from the deep sea port of Takarati, with multiple high voltage power lines, running adjacent to site. Exceptional geology, metallurgy and proximity to operational infrastructure have delivered the right mix of economic highs and lows for the project. We have a low capex, low opex, low payback period, low contaminants and a low carbon footprint, generating high operational throughputs yielding exceptionally high returns and revenues. And you can see the outline of the deposit there. We have strong ESG initiatives in Ghana, and in fact, in all our jurisdictions we operate in. In Ghana, we are a 99% national team and fully engaged with local communities with many initiatives and programs in place. We have significant upside um, in, in Ghana and our Cape Coast lithium portfolio. We've only explored to date 12 square kilometres of a 684 square kilometre package. And the other value add pro, uh, uh, targets and, and project areas that will, will soon be added to, to the fold are the, uh, the Edge of Samanku Historical Deposit, which has uh, a 1.4 million tonne 
non-jaunt resource running at 1.67% lithium oxide. We also have campacrom, crofu, indesimand, and anochi all within a stone throw, uh, stone throw of the Awoya uh, project. And we have multiple additional targets, which we're currently defining. And as I previously said, we have five auger rigs on site, beavering away to identify more targets to grow the resource. So that's it for um, that's it for 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 Ghana and our lithium project. And now I'll touch on the the merger of our gold assets. So in uh, in in Cote d'Ivoire and Chad, we have multiple significant portfolios. In fact, we have four gold portfolios. We have three portfolios in Cote d'Ivoire with the flagship Zaranu, and in Chad, our flagship project is Dorothy. And this is roughly what it's going to be looking like. So our Chadaian uh, gold assets and our Ivorian gold assets will all go into a new gold company, um, which will be separately listed on a recognized exchange um, to enhance shareholder value. Um, and we hope to be finalizing a, a beneficial structure for all shareholders in the coming months. As I previously said, our Ivorian lithium assets will stay 100% in Iron Ridge as part of our broader lithium growth initiative. Cote d'Ivoire has a proven is, is lies within the proven beryllium terrain. Zaranu is our we have a significant tenure package of um, just over 3,900 square kilometres. Zaranu is our most advanced gold project in Cote d'Ivoire with a 47 kilometer strike. And here you can see in the picture what will stay in the gold, what will stay in Iron Ridge and what will uh, be demerged into the new gold company. As I said, Zaranu is our lead project in Cote d'Ivoire uh, with a 47 kilometer strike gold corridor. You can see the scale potential here from surface. Uh, in the in the weathered zone, and we have we are fortunate enough to have a very deep weathered zone of approximately 50 to 90 meters across the entire 47 kilometers of the project area. In Zaranu, in Zaranu today, we've completed almost 90 lineal meters of drilling uh, over only 12 kilometers of a 40 km, of the 47 kilometer strike corridor. 90 percent of the holes to date have intersected mineralization in some way, shape or form. It's a very promising project, which we believe will deliver a robust mineral resource estimate in the coming months. Um, and there are some highlight grades uh, for your reading leisure. In Zaranu, we have significant exploration upside. As I said, only 12 square kilometers of 12 lineal kilometers of 47 has been drill tested to date and we are open uh, in both directions, north and south. Touching on our, our very important Vavla portfolio, this is a long strike north and south surrounding the Abuja uh, project, uh, which currently has a, a resource of 3.4 million ounces. Uh, we currently have um, auger programs underway uh, with several drill targets under definition. Okay, moving straight along into our other significant uh, tenure packages in Chad, we have the first mover advantage in the Republic of Chad with just shy of 750 square kilometers of tenure. We have the first mover advantage uh, in Chad and we have already defined a three square kilometer anomalous uh, zone over our flagship Dorothy project. The Tenure portfolio in Chad lies within the Sahara Metacraton. We have the potential analog of intrusive related gold systems, which is globally significant. There is no modern day exploration and there are extensive artisanal gold workings across our site. And the artisanal tailings, as you can see in the right hand, in the right hand bottom corner, uh, manually beneficiating and sorting. Uh, this gentleman's tailings are running at around seven grams plus seven grams per tonne. As I said, Dorothy is the flagship project with a three square kilometre anomalous footprint. We've, complete, we've completed over 15 kilometres of trenching with significant results. We've also completed regional aeromagnetics and 
ground IP geophysics, which confirm geological structures at depth. You can see the extent of the trenching here and some of, and a handful of the gold nuggets that we've retrieved from our trenching programs. Here's the uh, anomalous footprint of Dorothy. You can see how large and coherent the anomaly is. Um, the main vein, which is outlined in blue, is only one of several repetitious uh, zones that we've already identified. There's some key highlights from our trenching programs. Our longest trench, I think, is in the order of around 1.5 kilometres. Um, Dorothy is drill ready, and we hope to be drilling uh, after the wet season before Christmas this year. We have significant exploration upside in Chad, uh, along with the first mover advantage and our foot on, on some of the best ground we believe in, in the Republic of Chad. We have a 40 kilometre strike zone across our portfolio which encapsulates Dorothy, Gueria, Kalaka, and Navigate. Here's the teams uh, across all the jurisdictions we operate. So Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, and Chad. And that's it from me, folks. And uh, we look forward to updating shareholders across all aspects of the business as news develops. Thank you very much for listening. How are you today, Vincent? Uh, very well, thanks, Zach. Very well. Well, we, we've, uh, we spoke, I think we had an interview a few weeks ago, but uh, we're, you're back for more now. A um, few questions uh, that I've got sent uh, regarding your company. I think the, uh, the main one, I suppose, regards uh, is with regard to Piedmont and the deal that you have there. Um, do you think that that is um, the sort of the waiting game for that and the, the boat, et cetera? Is that, gonna, is that holding back um, prospective buyers in the stock? Look, I'm not really sure um, what's holding back uh, prospective buyers, uh, um, given the similarities of uh, Piedmont's North Carolina deposit to Iron Ridge's geological geological similarities to Iron Ridge's Arroyo deposit. Um, we don't see any geological risk. Uh, we don't see any approval risks at shareholder level either. Um, so not really sure what's holding back investors at the moment. Well, I mean, I mean, the shares are actually quite near the highs of the year. So it, in some ways, it could be argued that there's nothing really holding them back at all. Um, but maybe once everything is clear, then the shares would then be higher. So it's it's sort of uh, almost like a obsolete question, let's say. Yeah, look, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, when it's done and dusted by the by the end of August, uh, no later than the end of August, um, we'd, we'd hope to see that uh, that will appease any hesitation from investors. Okay, next up, um, what are the timings of the Piedmont uh, earn-in, the various stages, and how long until the first meaningful news flow on that? Um, look, we, uh, in respect of the Piedmont deal, um, uh, come the end of August, uh, at the latest, when we have our shareholder meeting to, to uh, approve the um, allotment uh the placing uh, increase increase of our placing capacity um and uh, look we're already working together behind the scenes um preparing our committees and, and and programs moving forward so um and there will be a uh, a flow of, of news flow from um uh, drilling activities and exploration activities that we currently have on site so uh come the end of august the subscription and 15 million US will be in the bank account of Iron Ridge. Um, and then they'll start spending um, another 17 million over the next sort of 12 to 18 months as we further regional exploration and uh, progress our studies to DFS. When do you think the process of demerging the gold assets will begin and, and we will be able to uh, buy shares in the new company as well as have a pro rata holding? Look, that's that's work in progress. Um, that is already underway. It's actually it's not as simple as people think. Just to say, we got intention is to demerge. There are a lot of considerations, you know, tax implications for shareholders, and mindful that we are operating across four jurisdictions. So we're dealing with Cote d'Ivoire, Chad, Australia, and the UK. Um, so look, we, we hope we'll be in a position in line with consummating the deal with uh, Piedmont. Piedmont are pretty keen to also be involved in, in the demerger. Um, and we will, uh, 
it's a fire balancing act to find the right mix uh, that is in the interest of all shareholders. But uh, we're on top of it, um, and we are, our intention is to progress without delay. What would the Iwoya scoping study numbers look like um, at current lithium prices in terms of revenue or IRR, et cetera? Well, okay, that's a, that's a difficult question to, to answer uh, without running the, the models, which I can't do in front of you. But look, the current, uh, our intel tells us the current sale price of lithium concentrate, uh, 6%, was around 850 US dollars CIS uh, in Ghana, where FOB, so free on board. And so that would be around 825. Um, every annual, additional annual year of production to our, our current project at current at prices we quoted at 650 was adding around 40 million to the MP uh, post tax MPV. But every $25 of increased product price was adding around 75 million US dollars to the overall MPV on a 10 year mine line. So if we were to be using an 800, say an $800 per ton spodumen concentrate price, you would see this MPV nearing 900 to potentially a billion US. All right, and then I, are you able to give a, an idea of the value of the proposed demerged assets or what they might be when they list independently and which exchanges you're considering? So it's a bit of a forward-looking situation there. <laughs> uh, look, uh, that's how long is a piece of string. Um, uh, it would definitely be more than the current valuation we're getting in the marketplace, which is zero. Um, it's, as I said, it's a bit of a balancing act. We've got to time that with the market, um, but we, we feel that we'll be... Um, finding the right mix, uh, which is accretive for all shareholders. In respect of exchanges, um, it's a multiple choice question, um, and we have made no definitive uh, decisions in that regard at this time. Okay, um, one of my own questions, um, is the result of all of this, or will it be that you become a, a sort of a mid-tier um, group? Is that sort of the goal that you, you would expect? Um, and in respect of the lithium or the gold or both? Well, the, the whole, the whole, the whole shooting match. I mean, yeah, you're 120, well, you're 120 I, million pounds now. I mean, what's the, is it sort of 500 or is it billion uh, pounds? What, oh. what is this? What, what kind of, are there any analogous companies to what you would like to be or what you could be? Yeah, look, there are a number of comparables out there. You have Sayona. Um, already at double our, our, our current market cap, and we see no reason why we shouldn't be at, this, at, similar, at similar standing at the moment. Um, and then as we progress over the next 12 months, I could see us being significantly higher than that again. Um, uh, yeah, look, I think there's lots of upside. We have lots of news flow, increasing, um, uh, refreshing scoping study in respect of grade, price, uh, life of mine um, and fast tracking to development and uh, our first commercialization. So, you know, we're at some point, Zach, we're going to, to move from MPV valuation to revenue based valuation. So, yes, we have definitely, with the Piedmont deal, we have accelerated um, our, our, pro, our, shall we say, our, our business model from explorer developer to up and coming on the pathway to producer. Um, where this is our first commercialization of our very, of our, one of our first greenfield discoveries. And we look forward to repeating that um, with the demerger of the gold asset. Yeah, and finally, uh, almost like a, a joke question or a final question, well, what are you more excited about, gold or lithium? Both, to be honest. I mean, um, lithium, it, it's bizarre, you know, look, Last year, we were a gold company with lithium credits. Um, this year, we're a lithium company with gold credits. Um, but the exponential um, uh, lithium demand uh, caused by the EV and stored energy revolution, uh, the dynamics of that are fundamentally different than what they were three, four years ago. Um, and uh, gold has always been that sort of fiscal economic backstop. Um, and we look forward to to hedging on that later in the year. 
So yeah, we're in two great commodities at this time. Vincent Maskler, CEO of Iron Ridge Resources, thank you very much indeed. Thanks very much for having me, Zach. Appreciate it.